Hello, this is Evan Rogerson, 9 Motor Gang, and today I'm going to have a real quick simple video just kind of covering the different kinds of VEX bar lifts, and I'll be using some CAD drawings that I made for my engineering notebook this year in order to showcase that. This isn't a complete comprehensive list, like I don't have lifts such as the 8 bar, but if you watch this video and understand it, you should be able to figure out generally how to build those and what the pros and cons are of them. Um, and additionally, it just assumes that you have like a basic understanding of how lifts work, because typically the way that lifts work is you have a motor, which is connected to a 12 tooth gear on a shaft. Um, typically that's just because lift needs a lot of torque, which is then connected to a gear, which is directly mounted to a C channel. So, so when the gear spins, the 12 tooth gear spins on the motor, then the larger gear, 60 tooth in this case, spins, which is directly mounted to a C channel, which makes things go up. Um, and that's just the kind of general idea of how a VEX lift works. Um, so obviously you need like some spacing in there, um, you need shafts and stuff, but in my lifts, since these are just made for the notebook to showcase the real idea, everything is just like bolted together, which obviously you wouldn't do. That doesn't actually work. You need like a shaft or screw joint there and then other things. But just getting into it, first on the list is the two bar lift, which is this. It is the simplest kind of lift by far. Um, you literally just make, make arms spin and that's all you have to do. Um, they're very simple, but they of course have a bunch of drawbacks because of that. So the main thing is, is you go down, you would grab something down there, and then raise it up. Um, one thing that's going to happen is this is going to rotate your object. It's not going to stay parallel to the ground, um, which I know some teams like 1000A at Mall of America was using this intentionally to try and like score on the neutral goals. Um, so it's definitely something that you can exploit. You can also get like large range of motions if you ever need that. You can go over um, 180 degrees, which is kind of cool. Um, and they're obviously going to be very light just because of how easy it is. Um, and then they're going to be shorter just because you only have that one singular bar and you can only rotate it so much. And then you're going to start pulling things away. And typically lifts are going to be at the back of your robot, so you're not going to be able to reach things once you start going too vertical. But yeah, they're light, simple to build. Um, I know teams are using them for high stakes in order to get rings onto the neutral stakes, and I think that's a pretty good application for them. But generally, they're not super common. This year is definitely an exception. All right, moving on to the most common type of bar lift by far is the four bar lift, uh, hence because it has four bars on it. So four bar lifts are really cool. Um, they use essentially a parallelogram in order to keep objects parallel to the ground. So these bars rotate. You have two bars. Um, one of them needs to be driven. The other one, can, like you could have your gear on that joint right there, but then this joint doesn't actually need to have anything as long as it's just like free spinning. And then this is essentially just your two bar mechanism, but by having this extra bar, you are forcing this end bar to stay parallel. So you could have like a claw mounted on the end there. And like a common example would be like back in tower takeover when you're stacking cubes, obviously you don't want the cubes to rotate on you or else you're not gonna be able to stack them. So you can just keep them all parallel to the ground. That's probably a easy way to think about this. It's when you wanna keep things parallel. It's not gonna be the tallest lift because unless you do some modifications, the C channels are gonna hit themselves um, right there. So obviously you can't go any higher than this and you can't go any lower than it there. So that's one of the limitations. You can offset your bars, like make some sure that they're not like in a line vertically from this angle. Um, that's gonna add additional complexity to it. Um, so typically four bars are only gonna have a movement range of about 120-ish degrees. And the further apart these bars are, the more range of motion you will get. But yeah, four bars, they're really solid. Um, they're still one of the lighter lifts by far. Really, really easy to build. Um, and another cool thing about them is, is you can easily add rubber bands to them. Let me just measure these. So we'll go, this, that distance is like 4.8 inches. Um, but now as I rotate this, that hole, now they're only 3.4 inches apart. So if you have rubber bands going between these two holes, um, they're actually gonna pull the lift together and the lift can pull itself up. So you can add rubber bands pulling this lift together in order to want the lift to raise up. So you can essentially counteract its weight entirely, which is really cool. Um, definitely a solid lift. Um, if you just want a general purpose lift, four bars your go-to. Now the six bar lift is quite similar to a four bar. Um, they're more compact, like this one will be just as tall, but as you can see, it's gonna have a much smaller profile right in there. So if you make them have the same space, they will be longer and able to reach further. And it's essentially a four bar and then another four bar. So you have your first four bar is there, 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 there. Then you have a second four bar that is there, 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 there. So it's essentially two four bars. Um, and this makes it more compact. 
It is going to be a little bit heavier. Um, you're still going to be easily add rubber bands, um, but if you need a really long reach or something, and again, you're also going to have that limited range of motion. But overall, six bars are pretty solid lifts. Um, they're, I'm not going to use them as often just because typically you don't need to go that tall or else you would use a different lift that I'll get to further. It's more if you need that really long reach, which might be useful this year for like reaching all the way to the neutral stakes from across the Auton line. They are going to be a little bit heavier than the four bar lift, so typically a four bar will suffice and you don't quite need that extra height that the six bar can get. But they're definitely really cool lifts. All right, moving on to the chain bar lift. Uh, this is definitely a lesser known one, but they're really cool. I think they're better than four bars in most cases. And also just a general disclaimer, I was lazy catting this and the chain doesn't actually move properly. Um, as I move this, the chain will like rotate. It doesn't actually do that. I'll put up a video from my fever dream testing um, real quick. But as you can see, these chain links actually stay the same and it just kind of like moves around the sprocket. So it's catted slightly incorrectly, but the main thing is is that it's it's a four bar, but the chain is essentially your fourth bar, um, which is cool. They also can have like full 360 degree range of motion, which is really cool, just because your chain and your C channel are gonna be offset inherently by the design. The sprockets need to be mounted firmly to the original C channel and your end C channel, but this makes them really lightweight. The only thing you really have to worry about is the chain snapping on them, but I never saw that happen on the chamber that I had. So yeah, they're really cool, versatile, and unlike the 4 bar lift, you get full range of motion, so you can raise them all the way up. And I know Fever Dream, in order to score on the neutral stakes, has to raise like all the way. It needs that extra height, which is why we didn't go with a 4 bar. That was also a 15 inch robot, so we couldn't just make it bigger. Um, but yeah, chain bar is really cool, especially if you need that extra range of motion or that extra height, or you want something slightly more compact. Just make sure that that chain doesn't snap. You need to also have it properly tensioned or else you'll have slop because the chain is essentially what's keeping this bar from moving around too much. Now going back to four bars, four bars don't have to be parallel. They don't have to be parallelograms and you can actually intentionally rotate things. Um, a common example of this was like Vexu intakes last year in order to get tri balls out of the max load zone or I know Ace's robot early season did this. So as you can see here, there's like one, two, three, four holes of spacing in between those. But then over here, like they're offset, you can see. So the spacing is going to be different. So right now this starts like not quite parallel to the ground. It's like more angled. Um, but then as you raise it up, now it is parallel to the ground. Oops. And then it goes back to leaning forward. So you can definitely exploit this in order to get very like precise movements. Um, it's definitely a rabbit hole to go down. There's a whole different list of things that you can do in order to change your geometry. Um, typically, you're going to have slightly more limited range of motion just because these bars are going to have an easier time hitting. Um, so I believe this example only has about 100 rather than 120 degrees of motion. But they can allow you to, if you need to slightly angle things, which I think might be useful this year, um, just if you want to de-score off the wall stakes, which maybe you will later in the season. I don't know. And there's a whole lot of possibilities to this type of lift. Now, final lift type is the double reverse four bar. So as with the six bar, it's like two four bars stacked on top of each other, but these ones are stacked like alternately from each other. Here we go. So four, double reverse four bars fold to be very compact here. Um, they're all just kind of nested inside each other, which makes them quite convenient for spacing wise. They are going to be pretty heavy just because it's like two four bars all at once. And then typically, Mine isn't quite rigged perfectly, but that bar will stay stationary. And then you have your four bar there, so you'd have your gear there. And then these would just spin in and out like that. Raise up the lift. This middle section, the way that you get this top four bar to spin, is typically you would have a gear mounted to like this C channel, and then another gear mounted on this C channel, because these spin in opposite directions, you'll notice. So the cool thing about this lift is this bar stays perfectly vertical. It doesn't move in an arc at all. So you can see this C channel just goes straight up and down, which is really, really handy if you're doing certain things. Like I know in descoring on Fever Dream, one of the biggest issues was is you had to constantly move forward as you were raising the lift. Um, but with this one, you don't have to do that because you just go straight up and straight down. Um, I think for high climbs, this might be something that you see on robots. And I think this will also be a useful thing just because of the expansion limits this year. So that pretty much covers all of the main types of bar lifts. Obviously, you can expand these. Like, there's nothing saying you can't do a double reverse six bar or quadruple reverse eight 
bar. There's nothing stopping you. It's just typically you don't need to go that high for Vex games, although this is the tallest structure that they've had in a very long time. So overall, that's just a quick overview. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments, and I'll try and get back to them. Uh, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss future content. There should be an explanation video for the robots that I posted a reveal for coming out soon. See you in the next one.